Hello everybody and welcome back for the new VR games recap. As always, I am Mateo311 and this is your one channel for everything VR related. This is the first weekly episode of a new series where I just casually go over all the new games I'm playing and I'll answer any questions you may have in the comments. So today we're checking out Swordsman VR and Solaris Offworld Combat. We also have some updates to the upcoming VR MMO Elysia and I'm trying to get Elite Dangerous to work in a motion simulation chair. Before I get into those games I mentioned, I do have to say that I will be streaming all next week, September 29th to October 2nd. I'll be playing the latest games and giving away multiple keys for those titles. So subscribe to make sure you don't miss out. Okay guys, let's not waste any more time and jump right into this. So let's start with Swordsman VR. I originally thought this was going to be a major competitor to Blade and Sorcery, but either everyone's head is made out of butter or my sword is actually a lightsaber. Rather than Blades and Sorcery, this game is much closer to Swords of Gargantua. You enter an arena with a specific theme, there are nine levels of increasingly more difficult waves of enemies, and then you have a boss fight. At any time between levels, you can use the gold and experience you've earned to either buy new weapons, armor, and level up your stats. Now while this is a physics-based melee game, it's not like Blade and Sorcery. Those physics are limited to your melee weapons only, and some of those amazing scenarios that happen in Blade and Sorcery just can't happen here. You won't be pulling an arrow from your body and then running up and jabbing it into somebody, nor will you be grabbing an enemy by the neck and slapping them around. Swordsman VR is just a swords fight. Which would have been alright if I didn't learn to master the art of the completely unblockable overhand right. I don't really get it, but for whatever reason when I strike in this manner, my sword just basically goes through their head like butter. I end up wielding a broadsword like a rapier, and helmets end up blocking absolutely nothing. And the physics, as limited as they may be, tend to go a bit crazy. Now I know I sound like I'm totally bashing on this game, and don't get me wrong, I'm just about done with it, and I had a decent amount of fun. It's just a bit more shallow than I expected, and I feel like it needs a few upgrades. If you enjoyed titles like Ninja Legends or Swords of Gargantua, I think you'll enjoy this game too. There's also an arena mode that includes a bunch of mutators that you can turn on to make those battles a lot harder or even a lot easier. Okay, so let's jump into that super hyped arena shooter, Solaris Offworld Combat. Now this is currently an Oculus exclusive title. It's cross buy and cross play, so it works on both the Quest and Rift platforms. And if you're wondering, it works perfectly with Revive. The majority of my gameplay has been done on a Valve Index, with just some Oculus Quest testing for comparison. Now Solaris Offworld Combat is definitely my style of game. I personally love arena shooters, and it's a pretty good alternative to my current favorite, Hyper Dash. It's just fairly bare bones right now, and not overly original. Mechanically though, this is a sound game. It's intuitive, extremely easy to get into, and just constant non-stop action. The gameplay loop is fairly addictive, there's a leveling system, and if you're only including official release titles, it's easily the best sci-fi themed competitive VR shooter on the Oculus Quest. In-game chat is locked to your team only, which helps tamper down on some of that toxicity you may see in other titles, so you just jump into this game and have a good time. But back to those bare bones I mentioned earlier. Now they have a solid foundation, but there's only one game mode and just a few maps. I know the developers are working on a lot for this title, but I'm scared they may lose their player base if those updates come out too slowly. This is the opposite approach of Hyper Dash, which has been available in a fun and stable version for almost a year now, but the development team just keeps adding more and more to this title, and when it does eventually launch as a paid game, it's already going to have a community behind it. Honestly, I hope both of these methods end up working, because I enjoy both of these titles and want to see them succeed. Speaking of a project I want to see succeed, we got a new extended trailer for the upcoming VR MMO, Elysia. Now, a lot of the footage in this trailer we've already seen. I received a personal tour from the developers of this game, and I made some videos showing off that footage, but the end of the trailer shows off a few things we haven't seen yet. There are these giant titan-sized creatures just roaming the maps. We saw a tremendous stone golem, a dragon, and a vicious-looking sandworm. If you wanted more information on this title, I will put up a link to my previous video so you can check it out, but just know, Elysia is in its last week of a Kickstarter campaign. The project is already fully funded, and now they're banging out their stretch goals. Now, speaking of goals, I'm actually planning to bring you guys some Yo 
your VR motion simulator chair footage in the near future. Now I will say the experiences I've had on this chair so far are pretty amazing, but I've run into two problems. I don't really have any simulation games. I've never been a big race car fan and Elite Dangerous, which is going to be amazing to play, is just a little bit of a headache to set up. So expect some of that content in the near future, guys. And that was the first ever new VR games recap video. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. Okay, I'll see you on next time.